We're in Shabbat Perek Tet Zion Mishnah Hey. We're going to continue talking about fires, and while this this Mishnah, it seems to be uh, relatively straightforward, it actually is one of the uh, more significant Mishnayot when it comes to modern day halacha and technology, as I will explain uh, moving forward. So let's say you have a fire, something you're you're something lit on fire. Rabbi Shimon ben Anas Omer, Rabbi Shimon ben Anana says, Porsin or Shel Gidi Al Gabe Shida Teva Umigdal. We've had that word before. Shida Teva Umigdal. A shida is a is a is a is a chest. A teva is like a, another kind of chest. A migdal is like a, a standing up a bureau drawer. So, so shachaz be'emet or they, they became uh, lit by fire. I don't remember the word. Burned. That's what my son said. Okay. So what can I do? I can porcine or shel gidi. I can take a goat skin and spread it over this chest. Because then what happens is, I guess they knew this. If you take the right kind of goat skin, it becomes a charech means it becomes singed. I.e., the goat skin won't burn. It will, it will cause the fire. Uh, as the fire spreads, it will, it will not become burned. Rather, it will become singed and the fire will go out. That's exactly what it says. The uh, fire does not catch on the skin. And you prevent this, this kli, you prevent this piece of furniture from burning. Let's say, God forbid, I have a fire on my, here I am, I'm a, I have a table, you can see. Okay, and the fire starts to spread. So I can take a ketchup bottle and put it over here, and then when the fire gets to the ketchup bottle, the ketchup bottle will open, bloop, and it'll spread, and it'll, it will, whether, they're, whether it's full or whether it's empty, in order to prevent the delay, prevent the fire from spreading. I've tried this. It doesn't work so well. What am I not allowed to do? I'm not allowed to, I'm not allowed to put out the fire. But here, what am I doing? I'm putting a mechitza b'chol ha-kelim. The fire starts on one side of my table. I try to get the table outside. Can't get the table outside. Muksa, whatever reason. Okay, it's not the kind of nefashot. I'm not, nobody's life is in danger. Okay, so, so I can make a mechitza. I can make a boundary with all kinds of kelim, vessels, whether they're full or whether they're rekanim, they're empty. In order to prevent the dleka, the fire from spreading. Rabbi Yossi oser b'kleicheres chadashim le'imayim. Yossi says, no, if they're earthenware, new earthenware pots, Full of water, you can't do it. He was there. The fish ain't yochol in the kabbalat or because they can't handle the fire. The hen meet back in and they break. Mechabinet adleka. They're going to break and they're going to put out the fire. Okay. So therefore, Rabbi Yosi says, "However, Rabbi Yosi, gram kibui asur afilu b'makom have said mamon." This is a very important term. Gram kibui. You might have heard this term. Gram. The grow means to causing. So I'm not putting out the fire. I'm not putting out the fire. I'm simply putting my ketchup bottle on the, on the table that's on fire. Okay? And then it will go out on its own. That's gram, to cause it. Even Bamakom has said Mamur. Rabbi says, you can't do that. That's the same thing as, as, as putting out the fire yourself. Right? Tanura says, if we pass them this way, ain halacha ke Rabbi Yossi. We don't pass them like Rabbi Yossi. You're allowed to put full or empty vessels in order to prevent them from, go, from going out, from letting on fire. That's called in the halachic terminology, that's called gram kibui, gram kibui, okay? Causing kibui, causing something to go out, causing something to, be, to, to, to go out. Similar to a term you might have heard of, this might, be, this might be familiar to you, grama. You might have heard this halachic term. What does it mean, grama? Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see. Grama. Grama is exactly that. When you don't do something on your own, but instead you cause it to happen. Gram to cause something to happen. This term grama is very, very prevalent term when it comes to the, the issues of technology and the use of halakha. There's a whole place, this whole institute called the, the Tzomet, I'll show you the whole page, the Tzomet Institute. Machon Tzomet. Basically, for many, many years, now they do it less. They rely on this halakha terminology less. But much of the Tzomet Institute's halakhic logic is based on the term of grama. Okay? So he says the following. Pe'ulat ihaikifin. Doing things akifin in a roundabout way, kuya grama. It's called grama. Tahainu ligrom means to cause something to happen. Lo asot, not to do it. Beinyan melechot shabbat tadavali madam yamishnah. We learn regarding the violations of Shabbat from the Mishnah. Shabbat sreifa. When there's a fire, she'ein basakanat nefashot. Life is not in danger. This is our Mishnah. Chesisin mechitza bechol akelim. You're allowed to make a mechitza. Okay, mutar meaning klomar meaning mutar lemalek kadei mayim. You're allowed to fill pitchers of water and place them in a place where the fire will go out, okay? And then it will, it will go out in order to... And the fire will put itself out, okay? 
These are what's called pi'ilot, akifot, are called grama. From this idea, the question is to what extent can we expand grama? The mission is excluded. That's the halakha. But to what extent can we expand grama? Based on this, the, the Tzomet Institute created all kinds of fascinating technological uh, innovations that use internally circuits that use grama. They have, they, they have a way of doing it. You can go to the Tzomet Institute in Gush Etzion. It's really important to see. They actually made a video that you can see on YouTube. I'll play the video. You can't hear it, but I'll play the video. Uh, they, they haven't made that robot yet. He says, oh, here we go. Let's say a fire is on your table. This is exactly the example. So he says, you're allowed, the mission says, you're allowed to place a self-melting. I don't know how they got that thing to melt, right? Okay, let's go back a little bit. He places the pitcher and then it melts. It's a melting pitcher. You, everyone's got to have one of those. Okay, and it puts out the fire. Wow, what do you know? And therefore, the some Institute said the same thing. You push the button. Uh, you didn't cause the light to go off. Now, the light's going to go off on its own. You didn't cause, you, that's something that you caused the light to go off. So they made all these switches that in such a way, they don't explain to you how they do it, but they make it in such a way that you didn't cause the stair lift to go up. You didn't, you didn't push the stair lift and make it go on. You did something that caused the stair lift to go on on its own, like pushing down one domino and the rest of the dominoes ultimately will cause the light to go on. Now that's not grama. He says that's bad. That's a direct cause. Grama is, I guess, some other thing. That's bad. You can't use the domino thing. And anyway, you get the point. That's the idea of, of grama that the Tzomit Institute instituted. Other people say, whoa, 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 one second. There's a lot of differences. First difference is, so first of all, the Tzomit Institute says you're only allowed to do this when there's great danger. But many people say, one second. When you put the pitcher, when I put the ketchup bottle, what are the odds? What's it, is it definitely going to go out? Is it probably going to make the fire go out? Maybe yes, maybe no. Many posts can say Gram Keyboy is only if it's not definite. Whereas if I make a Shabbos clock, it's definitely going to make the light go on, etc., etc. The Psika Halchatit, the Halachic Psak of the Summit Institute, is by, far, is by far definitely not something that's universally accepted. And that's why we all have Orthodox rabbis that we should ask and ask them whether it, the, the Tzomet uh, things are permitted or not permitted, and most importantly, in which instances they would be permitted and in which instances they would not. That's why everybody needs their own individual posek. We're not going to make Pesach Halacha based on learning one Mishnah very briefly in Hechot Shabbat. We'll stop here. If you have any comments or questions, as always, email me at arspolter at gmail.com, and we'll dedicate our learning to the memory of my father, Rav Simcha ben Yitzchak Talmud. Have a good day.